Hello everyone, thank you for checking out today's video. In this video, we're gonna be covering how to use script includes on client scripts on ServiceNow. Now, those of you that saw our previous script include video, we did have a use case where we created a script include and we used it on a uh, with a client script on a catalog item. Um, but in this one, we're gonna be doing something similar, but it is a different use case. So in this use case, we're gonna be pulling in the user's information from their profile. So we'll be pulling in their email and their phone number, and then we'll be auto-populating two fields on our catalog item using our script include that will be uh, utilized via a client script. Okay, so this is a documentation on ServiceNow's website that talks about script includes. So script includes are used to store JavaScript that runs on the server. So it's mentioning here too, consider using script includes instead of global business rules because script includes are only loaded on request. So it's a, a very helpful way so you're not having to keep recreating the same scripts over and over and over. You can kind of create it through a script include and then call it wherever you need to, whether that's across multiple catalog items or maybe you call it on like uh, the incident table or on a uh, through a business rule. So it's, it's a very helpful way to not have to be repetitive and keep creating the same scripts over and over, like I mentioned. Okay, so let's go over to the script include table and I'll show you guys what I did. I'll walk you through everything. And like the previous video, please feel free to pause it at any point so that you can copy down the code if you're trying to recreate this on your PDI or uh, another instance that you're, you're um, using. So what you want to do is you want to type in script include in your all applications menu, and you want to head over to script includes under system definition. Okay. And if you're creating a new script include, you would just come up here and click new to create your new script include. But for us, ours is right here. Okay. And your script include name is important because that will be referenced when you come over to your client script. And also it's important to put in some information in the description as well as the name that gives you an idea of what the script include does. So you're not, uh, in case you have a bunch of them, you know, you're not having to go to each script include and dig through the code and find out what you're trying to do. Okay. So coming down, uh, you want to make sure that if you're trying to call this on a client script that you have client callable toggled on. So you want to toggle that on and you want to make sure that you have the correct scope. So in case it's, you don't want it in global, you want it in a specific scope. You can go and select that here. Okay. And then coming over to the script. So what I did within the script is I created a function called check user. And the first thing that I did is I created a variable that is collecting the user's information that is viewing that catalog item. And we have a uh, requested by field that automatically populates the user's information that is viewing that catalog item. So that's uh, why I have this here. Okay, and next thing that I did is I created a object called user, and we'll be pulling in all the information from the user's profile and plugging it into our object. Next thing that I did is I created a variable on uh, pulling creating a new glide record on the sys user table. So when you create a new glide, you need to reference the table that you're trying to query. And in our case, it is the sys user table because we want to pull in the user's information from their profile. Um, from there, what we did is I did gr user. So my glide variable here, get. So it says right here, defines a glide record based on the specific specified expression of name equals value. So essentially what I'm doing is I'm just searching that table using our user sys ID which is this variable we created right here, which is being pulled in for the from the requested by field on our catalog item. Okay, and then from there, I started plugging in some information into our object. So first thing I did is I put in user.phone. So user.phone is equal to gr user. So our glide variable dot get display value. And then we are pulling in the phone. So you guys want to make sure if you're trying to pull in information from a specific table that let's do this. Let me just show you guys what I was doing here. Okay. So if you come over to email and you right click it, you're going to see show and then within quotation marks email, this is the value. This is the value that you need to reference on your script include. So you can see right here. Um, for user.email, I did gr user dot get display value and then email, which is the name of the or the value of the field that we're trying to get the information from. And then phone is actually business phone. So business phone is just phone, whereas mobile phone is mobile underscore phone. And you don't have to stop here if you wanted to add in additional information to your objects. You would just, you know, pretty much do like user dot title. And then you can come over here and you could pull in your title 
or a last name or first name or whatever. Maybe you have some custom fields in here you want to pull in, but I think you guys get the drift. And then from there, we're returning our object. And you can see right here, it's what it's doing. It's converting our JavaScript value to a JavaScript object notation string. Okay. So once we have that all created and you have all the information that you need, you want to head over to your catalog item or record producer or wherever you're using your script include. Okay. Well, I don't want to open it up yet because then you guys are going to see what it does. But um, <laughs> let's go over to our client script. We'll explain that first. Then we'll actually open up the, um, the catalog item. Okay. So I named my catalog item get user details and it's on load. And the reason it's on load is because I'm already pulling in the user's information on load um, via a default value on the requested by field. So from here, I am creating my first variable, which is called open by, and I'm just pulling in the value of the requested by because I'm going to use that after I'm calling my script include. Next thing I'm doing is I'm setting a new glide Ajax, which is pulling in our script include. So if I were to right click this and hit open definition, it would just take me right back to my, I don't think I have it open anymore. Let's do it just to show you. So see, this is the script include that we created. Next thing that we're doing is we're adding in a parameter. Um, so we have our sys parm underscore name. And then for the, uh, we're calling in our function here. So our function is called check user. <clears throat> Excuse me. All right. And next thing that we're doing is we're pulling in our sysparm user, which was set right here. So this dot get parameter sysparm user, and we're pulling in our open by, which is the variable that we just created right here. Next thing we're doing is we're setting a callback and then we create our callback function. And then we create our answer variable. And what this is doing is parsing our answer um, so that we are able to call the different things within our object. Well, I guess it's an object string. I don't, I'm not sure how ServiceNow describes it, but um, what we're doing is we're essentially parsing out the information that we pulled in. And then from here, we're actually setting the value. So if you do gform dot set value, the first option here, or the first item that you see here, the parameter is going to be the name of the field, the value of the field that is on your catalog item. So I just happen to name it phone, which is the same way that it's named on the user table. So after that, you need to go ahead and set what you want that, um, the value of that field to be. So what we're doing is we're pulling an answer dot phone. So rather than using user dot phone, we're pulling in answer dot phone because answer is how, um, we're parsing all the information that's inside of the object. So right here, it's just answer.phone. And say you had um, like a title field, like you had V underscore title as the name of a, a title field on your form, then it'll just be comma answer.title or whatever you named it right here for your object. Okay, and then same concept for email. I have the name of, an, um, the name of my email field on my form is called email. And then I'm pulling in answer.email which is essentially this user.email. Okay, and those were the only two values that we had stored within our objects, but please feel free to store as many as you need. Okay, so after you have all that set up, you wanna come over to your form. And then if it works correctly, which mine is, which is awesome, um, you can see right here, the email for the system administrator account, I have admin at example.com, and then for the phone field, it's just 702. And then I'm pulling in those two very, uh, values right here. So they're auto populating. And you got to think too that, you know, most likely you're going to have a requested for or requested quest details section on your forms. And it may be three, four, or five fields in rather than your user that's opening up this field having to fill that in. Uh, themselves every time you could just simply create that script include and that client script, which didn't take long at all. It will take you maybe 15, 20 minutes to set up and test, but you got to think over the course of time, how much time is that going to save the user that they don't have to search their name here, put their name in, put in their phone number, put in their email, put in their location, you know, whatever information you're able to pull in from their profile that's relevant for the catalog item, 
you just made a much better experience for your user because now they have, you know, maybe four or five less fields they have to fill in. Okay, guys, if you found this video helpful, please consider giving this video a like. Please also consider subscribing to the channel. Catch you all in the next one very soon.